Hi, everybody. Uh, I just realized that I did the countdown and I wasn't live yet. So this is Jason. I'm the host of the Content Marketing Virtual Summit, one of the co-hosts. And uh, welcome to the live stream. Uh, really, I'm very happy about the amount of participation uh, and the number of people who've said good things about the speakers. We have had uh, 12,000 plus people register and participate uh, throughout the week so far. And we've got just a couple days left, full schedule coming up tomorrow and the day after. So um, once again, thanks to all the speakers and really love the amazing participation that we've been having. So let me see how this looks to you guys. Okay, that looks really nice. All right, so um, what I want to do is uh, take the next 15 minutes or so and just walk you through a quick case study on how content marketing can work uh, for you. And so, let me quickly get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I think I can just do, let's see, let's see if I can, how can I do this? Um, okay, so let's go into the first thing, which is what is essentially, why are people doing content marketing? Like that's, that's really a question a lot of people want to know. And what can I get out of content marketing? So the, the first thing that we wanna do is look at some of the assumptions that people have in content marketing. And the first assumption that people have in content marketing is that it should work really quickly. So the first assumption is it's gonna work really, really quickly. And um, actually I want to dispel that because if you're doing paid ads, you can obviously spend money and you can you can get clicks coming in pretty fast. But for, for content marketing, when you're when you're creating organic content, it takes time to, to build uh, a result. So one of the challenges I think people struggle with is that they they apply really short time frames. They apply a time frame that might work for an event or a conference or for for paid for a paid advertising campaign to organic traffic, and then they're wondering why at the beginning it doesn't look like it's doing very much. And um, the the truth is that over time it it will become more and more valuable. And I'll show you that. And finally, it is an asset. So that's that's something I really want you to consider is that content marketing builds an asset. So just like any asset, if you were to spend time to build a resort, your resort then would require groundskeepers and people to take care of it because you have something really valuable. So when you create an asset from content marketing, you also want to make sure you have the uh, care and monitoring in place. So the first question that we're gonna take a look at, the first thing we're gonna do is look at a real situation, a real live case study. And in this case, um, a few months have gone by since we started publishing. And I'll, I'll actually explain a little bit more about the research that went into this and the article writing process and uh, quite a lot of details behind this. But first publishing was started sometime in this time frame, and a few months later, it's easy to say this isn't working, right? It's easy to say, um, this is not a good investment, let's stop, you know, it's been already a few months, doesn't seem like it's doing much. So the question someone might ask is, what if we had stopped here, what would have happened? What, what, what could we have actually seen? So in this case, we did uh, have the ability to keep going. It was a one year uh, renewable uh, relationship. So what happened after that, right? Did it stay flat? Did it go down to zero? What happened? And you know, it, it, this is something that's actually pretty remarkable. Just to see something like this now, for for some some, you know, keep in mind, you can see that this is a real uh, access here. There was almost no topic authority at the beginning, almost no traffic. So to go from this to start, even within say approximately six ish months, four to six months, to see a pattern like this. Uh, is is a very strong indicator that something is starting to drive the business. Something can drive leads, something can drive sales, something can drive topic authority and brand uh, brand authority. So the same question comes up. So is this something that's going to flatten out? Is it something that's going to crash? How sustainable is this? Does it even make sense to keep investing in this? Is this the best we can do? So what do you think is going to happen after here, right? Is it going to go up a little bit? Is it going to go down? Is it going to crash? What do you think is going to happen, right? And this is actual data. So this is what really happened, right? It exploded. 
right? So now we're looking at a longer time period. Now, this is a really important uh, experience to sort of go back and see this experience because a lot of times when you're looking at content marketing, people are judging it on a very short time frame, and they're just not uh, thinking it's working, but actually they're not giving it enough time. And in addition to that, I'll explain a little bit more about topic authority. I'll, I'll talk a bit about topic clusters, and I'll talk about having a content plan, a really well-researched content plan, where you're looking not only at your website and your content inventory, um, and we recommend starting with a content audit, but you're actually also looking at content gaps. And what I mean by that is, you're looking at your content versus your specific competitors for a specific uh, category of product that you're trying to sell uh, to a specific target market. So a competitor that's actually competing for the same offer you have, what are they doing that you don't have? Where are they relative to you? That's called a content gap. And for keywords you care about, for keywords that could bring you topic uh, to leads and sales. So now what happened here is really interesting. In this case, um, the, the designer took a break and left this client. And so the client said, we're gonna pause publishing for a little while while we find a new designer. So what do you think happened? Do you think it just kept growing? Do you think it went down? Do you think it you know, uh, went up? So actually this is what happened. It started to drop. Now it's not a huge drop, right? It's not a very big drop, but it is a drop. It is a few uh, percentage points or uh, drop. And it's a stark difference because of the growth that we've been seeing up to this point. So pausing even for a few weeks has almost an immediate effect, uh, not an immediate like within the same month, but it starts to have an effect. Now, th like the client saw this, we saw this and they said, okay, we got another designer. Let's, let's start publishing again. And we went back to the 52 week content plan. We went back to all the research we had done. We utilized our SEO article writing brief, uh, which is based on, understanding all the relevant and related keywords and topic clusters. And uh, we have a very thought out process to create uh, you know, well-written content that's actually written for human beings to, to consume and enjoy it within the client's voice. And we kept writing. And so what happened next? Did it drop? Did it, did it flatten? Did it do anything? And it's, it's amazing because what actually happened was it grew in, in one month more than it had grown in the last, in the first three months combined. Just this one month alone was here we were barely getting 300 visits and now we have 1,300 visits increase in one month. So it's a phenomenal uh, you know, case study to look at this. Now this pattern is repeated across even companies that have existing traffic, uh, very large companies. Um, we have uh, companies that we help that are doing a billion dollars. We have companies that we're help helping that do about a hundred million and we have a lot of startups that are doing about a million or less than a million, uh, even coaches and, and local businesses. This same pattern is seen uh, almost consistently through, all, through every single uh, client we work with. Now, there's a, there must be a reason behind this, right? So I'll come back to the summary at the end. So I wanna start by saying it doesn't always look like this. And, and I think that you know it's nice to have such a beautiful graph and have such a nice story to tell. But this is also real data. Now, this is what I, I will say. This is actually from the same exact client, but it's not an article that was based on our, our methodology. This was actually based on a different methodology. And this happens much more frequently than anyone would like to say, which is that somebody writes an article, does well for a little while, and then it crashes. And there's a few reasons for that, right? One is that a lot of times when they create this article, they send it out on a newsletter, they promote it, promote it on social media, and so it gets that initial sort of interest. But the article isn't really well written or the article isn't necessarily deep enough. And so what happens is people don't engage with the article and that tells Google this article was given a chance, but it's not really holding its own. And therefore the article starts to get unranked and the traffic crashes, which is which now I'll show you the pattern that you that you want to see. So this is a little bit small, but this was the first article uh, one of the first articles of this campaign. And you can see that the bigger pattern of the entire campaign is repeated here. But again, in the first few months, it doesn't look like this article is doing much. But you'll notice that this article is very different from this pattern. It's created value and it's holding its own. It's standing up to the competition. 
because it's deep. It's a deep article. It's well written. It covers all the re required information, but it's also easy to read. It's engaging, so it follows good writing, uh, you know, skill. It's it's actually re written for someone who wants to read it, not for SEO. But it also has the SEO uh, research behind it. Now, here's another article that came a little bit later. You can see it started. Uh, it didn't have a lot of traffic, and now here's another one. Now you probably can see what's happening, right? Now, what's happening is more than just that these that these are three articles that are not the same pattern as this. What's happening is each article is, is starting to act like a team, teamwork. They're, they're, they're signaling to the world and they're signaling to readers, if you come and read this article, we've got another article that you might want to dig into. If you read this article, we've got another article that's a slightly different angle that might be really interesting to you. So if this article is about, for example, how to make a healthy smoothie for breakfast, this could be how to make healthy, uh, you know, vegan, for example, uh, vegan scrambled eggs. And this one could be about, for example, drinking wheatgrass. So because there, there's a relationship between these articles, they're actually working as a team. And um, we'll discuss a little bit later on, uh, possibly today, what is a topic cluster and how do you build topic clusters? But it's not just these articles are performing individually. They're actually weaving together to create even more strength. So what happened after that? So another article happened. Now this one, you know, got beaten up a little bit, but I'll show you what we did. I'll show you how we, we, we stabilized it. And this one you can just see is just going for it. Little bit of, uh, you know, concern there at the end. Okay. So now you can look at one, two, three. Now, none of these articles in the first two months were really performing. Now, one thing I haven't done here is I haven't added up the lifetime traffic from this article. If you add up the lifetime traffic, it's 700, you know, 600, 700, something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this probably is, is nine. So just let's roughly say 6,000 you know, sessions uh, from just one article. And the lifetime value of this one is, is, is obviously less because it hasn't been around that long. But that's another, that's another way to look at this is the lifetime value of the articles that you're creating because these, these articles have a lot of longevity to them. They're not gonna go away uh, like articles that are written without the proper SEO research and the proper SEO methodology and also written for human consumption. So just to summarize, there's two things we're saying. The first one we're saying is we're creating articles that work together. And secondly, we're saying that we're creating topic authority. And in addition, we're also saying we're creating a long-term asset that is going to keep bringing relevant traffic leads and sales to the client. So we're, we're sort of done with this step. So it keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger and week by week. This is a very important point. Okay. So this is one article, two articles, three articles, four articles, five articles, six articles. Now, actually, I didn't show it all, but there's 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 an article being published every week that's following this pattern. So you can just imagine how powerful a signal that is to the world that not only do we care about this particular topic, but we have fresh, really fresh, really relevant, really related content um, coming out that's well written every single week. Okay, we don't miss any weeks, so we're very consistent. So there's a lot of signals being sent that we want to really help people learn and grow and solve their problem around this topic. So if you look at all these articles together, now you'll see the pattern overall, how we went from this initial two months to four months to eight months and all the way up. And this will this will maybe surprise you, but in the second year and third year, this is going to expand even further. It's going to, it's the most value is going to come in years two and three and four and five. Okay. Um, so it's a tremendous uh, example. And this, this is again, a pattern we see across, you know, all our clients that publish, uh, you know, on the schedule that we're recommending to them and invest uh, on the schedule that we're recommending to them. And, and we found that organic traffic written with the right care is by far the lowest cost and best converting asset that any business can have over the course of 12 months and longer, okay? Over the course in 12 of 12 months and longer. So um, I'm just gonna show you one more thing and then I'll summarize. So the, the last thing I'm gonna show you is something I mentioned earlier, which is called the care, the monitoring and care of this kind of asset. So what kind of monitoring should you have? What kind of care should you have? Well, there's quite a few things. There's a normally we 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 have an SEO monitoring, SEO audit monitoring system that looks for technical issues uh, on a on a monthly basis and proactively identifies 
when an issue has occurred, whether it's duplicate content or it's, uh, for example, um, content that hasn't been properly optimized or content that you know, has a broken link or any of those kinds of issues. We have, I think, 40 plus issues that our own software is monitoring for. And it's monitoring in the background and alerting us when there's a problem, an SEO technical problem. The other kind of monitoring we do is keyword monitoring. And just really quickly, I'm gonna talk about what, what this means. So I, I removed the specific keywords just to protect the, you know, the, the case study a bit. But what this is saying is every week, we, we, we sometimes run this as frequently as every week, but normally it's a, you know, a once a month is a, is a very good frequency. And what we can see here is this keyword, what used to be on page one, and now it's dropped to page two. This is the page location. Now that's this, and we have the search volume over here, which I've also removed, but we know a lot about this keyword. We know what article it is, 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 is driving. We know how many leads it's driving. We know if it's generating revenue. So it's, it's not just a keyword. It's actually a, a part of why people trust this business. And when it drops, we proactively know that, and we have specific things we can do to improve the article, to defend the article, to look at and see if there was an SEO issue that happened. Um, was there a duplicate content issue that happened? Was there something else that happened? So this defense means that we protect things that are working for us. We don't let them deteriorate. Now, on the other hand, we can see that there's articles that are that are that have been published uh, possibly recently that have started to come up and are up and comers ready to move onto the first page. So these are these are hints to, that these could be topics that we could expand on. We could we could even build them further. It's like let's let's build on our strength. Let's let's push these guys to the very top. So if you have this kind of monitoring, in addition to article level monitoring like this, combined every single month and you have a 52 week content plan with every single keyword for every single week being carefully planned out and you have good writing you're getting a lot of you're getting a lot of uh, uh, things right that that most of your competitors may probably start and stop start and stop fits and starts and they probably your competitors probably don't understand this graph right your competitors are saying well i don't really understand what's going to happen next so let's give up now you understand what can happen next if you have a 52 week content plan. And so you actually have an advantage by understanding this case study and understanding monitoring and care. So let me summarize quickly what I want you to take away from this uh, quick uh, case study presentation and live stream. So the first thing I want you to be thinking about is are you utilizing organic content to build an asset for your business? And I want you to think about a year from now what do you want your business to look like? And and I, I we use Google Ads, we manage Google Ads for for clients, and I think Google Ads have a lot of value, and and they're they're very useful in many ways. And other types of ads like Facebook ads and 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 so on, uh, you know, all these different types of advertising systems, they all have value, right? They all can do things to make your business stronger. But in a sense, you know, if you stopped your ads what would happen to your traffic, right? And 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 I, I know that if people stop their ads, a lot of times the traffic just goes down if that's what they're depending on. But if you have articles that are stable and that are being monitored and cared for, then that means that even if you stop publishing new content for a little while, you won't grow as fast, you might pause your growth, but you've still got an asset. You've built something that people might even want to buy when you want to sell your company. So organic traffic and organic content marketing is the long game to build your business. And it's the game that creates an asset for your business. And it's the game that you can start to depend on. And it's the game that also accelerates and gets stronger and stronger and stronger year after year after year. So just to summarize the final point in this presentation, in this situation, we grew from 300 visits to 7,500 relevant visits in approximately 12 months. And that is an astounding growth rate. That is a 23 times growth rate. Now, there's, there's obviously no one is going to promise that to you because, number one, you don't know whether this particular client was spending several thousand dollars a month or $10,000 a month, or you don't know what the spend was. You don't know how deep the articles were. You don't know how much research went into those articles, right? And what, what was the niche that they were uh, competing against? And what was their existing domain authority? Did they already have a domain that has, that has some authority? So my caution to you is when you see something like this, just please know your results are going to be unique to your niche, 
to your keywords, your competition, the age of your domain, a number of different things, okay? If you if for example you have a situation where you've been penalized by Google, you've had, you know, some some bad SEO going on, your situation could be very different. So we we usually start with an audit, we start with also a content audit uh, as well. The second point I'm going to make is that we started with a very clear 52-week content plan. And we actually teach that now in a course to to people who want to become certified content planners and are, are actually experts in specific things like nutrition, uh, exercise, finance, and things like that, real estate. So if you want to hire an expert that knows how to build a really thoughtful content plan, uh, you know, we're, we're actually training those types of people to be available and they're available right now. So please get in touch with me. Um, and, 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 and the best way to do that is through my LinkedIn. And the second, the last thing I wanna say is that every single keyword in the content plan goes through a very thoughtful process of looking at your website's existing content, your website's existing data, but also your competitors. So what that means is for every single keyword, we're looking at how much work do we have to do to beat the competitors? And, and they're very specific competitors to your particular niche and product, not just everyone who's writing for that keyword. So by knowing that, we, we find the content gap and we can create the right content to not only equal, but actually beat. We look at what's missing from their co content, what do people want that they're not getting from the existing content? Why can't we fill the gap, not only with the competitor, but actually with what the consumer is really looking for? And to do that, we utilize a lot of search data. We actually go into not only search volume and cost per click, but we actually look at the questions people are asking, a lot of related keywords, uh, and, and many other um, factors. So I think for this study and for just today, I'll just leave you with this final note, which is, um, I think organic content is a foundation for a lot of other channels. It is a foundation for social media. It is a foundation for your newsletter. It is a foundation even for making your salespeople more effective. So in terms of when people are making calls, they can refer them to organic content. So organic content is not meant to be just something that's done on the side. It's actually something that can really help you create a rhythm to your business and a rhythm to getting leads and sales and growing your business consistently and building an asset. So the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is, think, please think of organic content and organic content marketing in the context of a content plan. If you don't have a 52 week content plan where every keyword has been researched and validated against your data, the competitors and the search demand, and if there isn't a specific plan for every article on how it to be written so that it's really appealing to your brand and to your to your audience uh, you're not going to you're not going to get the most benefit out of organic content and you're going to draw the wrong conclusion and um in three years from now if you want to get investment for your business or sell your business one of the best things you can do is show the investors and show people who want to invest in your business that you have a thoughtful organic content strategy that has been implemented for the last two to three years and that's actually working on your behalf because then that investor can come in the acquisition buyer can come in and they know that they can continue working the plan that you've put in place with your certified content planner and so i think this is a fantastic uh, opportunity for people to build their existing revenue grow their revenue um, you know have some stability even if they want to slow down on ads sometimes and also have an opportunity to build the value of their business in terms of long-term exit. So I think that's it for um, the session today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you're enjoying the conference. Uh, I hope you could see the slides. I know it wasn't uh, a, a huge screen. And um, you know, we're just so grateful to have all the participation and the wonderful speakers and all of the hard work by the team. So thanks to everyone. and. We'll see you tomorrow. It's a full day, a full agenda of speakers. And we'll have another Q&A tomorrow as well. So please uh, make sure you join us for that. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you uh, tomorrow. And I hope you're enjoying the conference and that you have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world. Take care, everybody. Oh, one last thing. Feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions or if you would like to learn more about how a certified content planner can help you to plan out your organic content and get this result.